It's the hub of the UK's defence and security industry, with more than 100 exhibitors showcasing the latest technology to help tackle counter-terrorism, military power and disaster relief. Including this concept, a soldier-worn smart hub controlled by the mind. The first use is uh, well-being. So the user wears the headset, we monitor uh, the brain waves and through some smart algorithms are able to determine things like stress, and tiredness and engagement and we feed that back to control or command. Uh, they're then able to identify soldiers or the wearer uh, that may not be on task or may not be able to execute the mission properly. The second is all around control. People have got excited about this because it's sexy and allows us to potentially fly a drone or control an unmanned ground vehicle by thought. And it's extremely light. I mean, I, you know, you forget you're wearing it. This will just be inserted in their, their pocket, I exactly guess. Exactly right, yeah. So was that something that you wanted to achieve, was that it was going to be light and you weren't even realising you were wearing it? Yeah, so, um, so the whole objective, is the prime directive of everything we're doing is to reduce the weight burden on the man. So, so taking off weight by... By adding equipment sounds counterintuitive, but what we're doing is taking away all the cumbersome equipment and replacing it with more lightweight, integrated equipment that's doing the same and more. Protective clothing provided for the military was also showcased, the uniform being updated in line with future combat environments. And this is their Generation 4 combat clothing. A lot of people will previously know the Generation 3 stuff, which lots of soldiers have used in Afghan and other places. Um, you can denote that pretty quickly by the knee pads, which all the lads a lot of the lads like. That stuff was quite heavy. It was quite like a bit like denim, really, when it came to um, its wear and its feel, which obviously in hot, hot Afghan summers, you know, is, is, it protects you very well, but at the same time, it's quite hard work. It's quite hot. So this Gen 4 fabric is quite clever. It, um, it maintains those sort of protective qualities of the Gen 3 fabric, but it's much, much lighter weight, which means, of course, when you bring it back to places like UK and you get soaking wet, and you're sat on Otterburn, on Otterburn hillside, it's going to dry out all that much quicker. Um, and also it's got a bit of stretch in it. If you look at most mountaineering clothing or outdoor clothing these days, it has a fair amount of stretch in it. So guys can reach up, perhaps hold a fire vision, aim their weapon properly without having undue stress in the garment. Drones are used regularly by the military now, but they're constantly evolving, their role proving vital in many situations. Tethered drones allow us to fly beyond the standard length of a battery, um, which normally limit, limits the, the flight time of drones. So the idea is that we can provide a persistent surveillance uh, capability. It can't be uh, jammed as there's no RF frequency going between the, the ground station and the drone, which is a, a key point. And finally, physical security. The drone can't fly away, uh, away from the length of the tether. Every year this event brings together senior military leaders all with the same goal, to find modern technology that can be used to fight against any threat faced in the future.